Welcome to the Content Amplified Podcast, brought to you by Masset. Our goal is to help you get more from your marketing content. Each episode is a 10 to 15 minute interview with industry experts that share amazing insights to help you squeeze as much juice from your content as you possibly can. Here's today's interview. Welcome back to another episode of Content Amplified. So excited to have here everyone on the episode today. Today is extra special. We have two guests at the same time. In my experience, that usually equals heated debates. So we'll see if that ends up being the case today. But we have two fantastic guests. We have Mickey and Kelly. Thank you both for coming on the show. Appreciate you having you here. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having me. I think uh, it won't be as heated because we're friends, but maybe we'll agree to disagree on a few things. Okay. I'll try to figure out how to disagree with you at some point during the episode. That's my objective. So um, maybe before we get started on the subject, Mickey and Kelly, could you quickly explain a little bit about your background, some of your passions and expertise in marketing? Yeah, sure. I'll get started. Um, So I'm Kelly Arlano. Um, I am a native to the San Jose Bay Area. Um, graduated with a marketing degree. I have a huge passion for tech, so never left the Bay Area. I started my career in demand gen, um, you know, took a lot of years, almost 10 years in the demand gen space. And most recently, within the last year, moved over to the content side of the house, uh, realized that demand gen was just a little bit too high pressure for me. So wanted something a little bit more fun and Um, the KPIs were a little bit less aggressive. It was more of like the brand awareness side. Um, So yeah, I, uh, I'm really excited to be here. And I worked alongside Mickey over at Cloudinary um, doing demand gen. So that's where we met and have continued our friendship outside of Cloudinary. I am now working as the content marketing manager for a company called Exactly out of Los Gatos, California. Awesome. How about you, Mickey? That was nice and condensed. I'll try to give cliff notes as well. Uh, I was born at, no, I'm just kidding. I was uh, <laughs> in a past life. Uh, history and archaeology was my passion. Uh, and I actually worked on a dig site overseas and found out archaeologists to be just destitute and have no money and no funding. And so I got into sales and marketing uh, where I was uh, self employed for a little over seven years. And then when my wife and I moved to California, uh, I happened to just stumble in into tech which was great. It's a Cloudinary, as Kelly mentioned. Uh, and there, I kind of found my footing being like a jack of all trades in marketing, uh, landing on community building, content creation, which turned into uh, where I am, what I do now, uh, classified as a content strategist. So I plan, develop, and manage uh, a strategy for PR communications, for SEO, uh, corporate website management, making sure messaging, everything links to the specific uh, business line uh, there, and then also help manage social media teams. And so just developing oh. the overarching content strategy. Uh, I'm not actually a writer, so don't depend on me for that. And that's where AI becomes a, a great tool. Very cool. I love it. Kelly, I spent many years in demand gen as well. I feel like 10 years is honestly like 40 years is what it feels like at the end of the day. So I know Absolutely. what you're saying there. It aged me for sure. <laughs> yeah, it'll take a toll. It's it's good fun. When it's good, it's good. When yep. it's bad, it's bad. And so it's it's definitely a fun area. Yeah. So today's subject is fascinating. And um, I'm not going to lie, we were talking before the episode. And Mickey just refuses to take credit for this principle. I Googled it. I couldn't find it anywhere else. He claims some SEO agency made it up. But I'm fully willing to give him full credit for this principle, but uh, he won't take credit for it. But I, th- I think it's all Mickey at this point. A thousand percent back you up on that as well. See? So that's two. So, um, so what this is, this is the Mickey R principle of repurposing content. So <laughs> Mickey, why don't you introduce this? This is a really cool principle for, we often talk about repurposing content, right? You create it get more value out of it, squeeze more juice out of it. But a lot of times that's where it ends. It's just like, we should get more out of it. But this is like a really cool framework about how you should be thinking about it and the exact outline. 
what are the different R's in this this principle and, and how should we start thinking about repurposing our content using the Mickey patented, trademarked, copyrighted R principle? Well, you've said one of them, one of the six R's, re repurpose. And it, um, just a little bit of a background, kind of like my thought process on repurposing actually stems from the time that Kelly and I worked together. So we were working in a same team, but our, our groups were siloed. And so Kelly would work on her demand gen campaigns, ad campaigns, webinar, managing the webinars, and they would create their own eBooks and white papers where, uh, mark, where our team corporate evolved to be corporate marketing, or we would just generate our own content. So it was a disconnect in messaging. And so then Kelly and I got together just, I would say as a way to kind of like make each other look good in our own positions in terms of like, hey, look at all this stuff we're generating. It's like you scratch my back, I scratch yours kind of thing. And so like she'd be managing these webinars and we only used to just post a webinar and post it on social. So then how do we then take that webinar and basically repurpose it across all different channels? So that's where it, this started, the journey started. Uh, but the six R's is repurpose, refresh, republish, uh, redirect, rewrite, or to retire. Uh, and basically I view all content in that. So if you're going to, if you work at a company or you have a client that they have an existing content repository, uh, normally their mindset is like, oh, we have to, oh, we, we have to create five new white papers, another ebook. We have to generate these leads. We need to uh, build this page. We need to do that. But ultimately they're actually sitting on a gold mine of content that's just not getting any use. And so some of it could be outdated. There's an SEO strategy uh, around it. It's like you have blogs that are still up to date, still good, but they were published two, three years ago. All you need to do is give it a good copy and edit it and then republish it with an updated date, keeping the URL the same, and you'll start getting traffic to it. Rewriting existing content by updating it, giving it a refresh. Maybe the product uh, images are out of date. And so you find this like challenge uh, it's a challenge that most companies face. Uh, and especially if, if like at Cloudinary, uh, I was one of the first people on the market. I was the first marketing hire there. And so it was starting from the ground up. So in that case, there's not much to refresh. So that's like uh, creating that, the pillar pieces of content, evergreen content, and then creating a strategy around that. Or as Kelly can uh, go into at um uh, at her latest company, they have like a huge repository of content. And so it's uh, about changing mindsets. I love it. So Kelly, how are you guys using the R principle? Yeah. So uh, the first time I heard about the R principle was with Mickey. I was new in my role and I needed to reach out to the content guru on, hey, you know, my issue is not that there is not a lack of content, which traditionally is the problem, right? And especially being on demand gen, it's like, oh, well, wait, we don't have an ebook to promote this or sales wants this and sales is always asking for something new, right? Shiny new object and they want an asset around that. So what I found was I was in a new position where I almost had this overwhelming amount of content that I, I just didn't even know how to get started. Right. Um, and, and in past experience, like we had talked about like date, like data, right? Like, let's look at the data. Like, let's look, let's take a look at Google analytics and see what are top performing assets. Like that'll give guidance on, uh, the top topics that we should, you know, look to repurpose and refresh assets on. But I reached out to Mickey and I really wish I wrote a recorded our conversation because he just kind of directed me on this, our principle and the framework and basically said like, okay, we'll take a look at your content inventory. Definitely start at like the top assets that are performing well. And then, you know, follow the, our principle, the repurpose, the refresh, republish, redirect, re rewrite and retire and start from there. So, you know, if you have like a high performing ebook asset or a guide, how can you refresh that well, or repurpose that or rather, like, let's look into maybe running a new webinar around that, right? Demand Gen's happy, sales is happy. Uh, we can also look to repurposing the webinar content into a blog and promote that on social media as a different channel. Um, you know, carving up the webinar itself in a short video snippets to be leveraged on social media. So, I mean, there's just like a ton of ways to just repurpose content that you already have in house without having to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. I love it. One thing that hit me while we were talking through this 
if you start out writing content knowing that you are going to repurpose it in a ton of different ways, it also sets you up for a new standard of the quality of content you should be writing. So if I'm going to write mm -hmm. it and I know I'm, I've got to repurpose it, you know, seven, eight, 10, 12 different times, the quality of the content's going to go up because I know I'm going to have to squeeze a lot out of it. So I might as well put it into the article up front. And I think that makes a big difference. So we talked a lot about demand generation, you know, with backgrounds and stuff. Kelly, any insights about how this repurposing content was able to impact overall results on the demand generation side from, from lead generation, awareness, all the different metrics that are important for a business to grow? How does this impact your ability to do demand generation and scale as a company? Yeah, it's a really great question. I think, you know, one of the main things that I can talk to there is that every piece of content has a goal, right? And just as long as like every demand gen generation campaign has a different goal. So if you're running something like sponsored placement, right? Like if you had repurposed an ebook, like take that ebook asset and for something like sponsored placement, like make that into an easy digestible piece of content, like a fun infographic or a cheat sheet that you can leverage on, you know, through promotions through that channel. And then it drives to a gated landing page, right? To download the ebook content. Um, so things like that are just things that you want to take into consideration, right? Is like, okay, well, what is the goal of the, the content? What's the goal of the campaign? And how do those two work together? Um, yeah, I hope I that it. that helps. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the goal orientation makes a lot of sense to say, hey, it's not just to repurpose for the sake of repurpose, but let's achieve the goal. Let's continue to spread the ability for traffic to come to this asset, the ability to get more mileage, more leads, more exposure. Um, on a previous episode, we were talking and it's something like seven, eight times is the amount of time someone needs to see your content before they're actually going to consume it. So this actually lets you kind of hit some of those metrics without just kind of getting ad fatigue or things like that with the same old, same old. I'll yeah, also add, sorry. Uh, but I also had a common mistake uh, in terms of repurposing for the sake of repurposing is that in terms of like uh, a lot of times people will set the plan. Like I have this ebook, it's uh, there's going to create a campaign around that. Then I have, there's four themes. You get four different white papers. Each one have its own theme but they lack the vision to evolve the messaging uh, based off of what resonates. Uh, and I've fallen into this trap early on where like I've generated all this content up front and we plan on this release, but like not all the content resonated. So you've just spent all this time and effort generating this, working on repurposing content that's essentially not going to get consumed where this small tidbit is what actually got the clicks, got the likes, got the, uh, the, the demo requests. And that's where you should kind of pivot and focus your efforts on. That's true. From the analytics side, it's cool to segment out the parts of the content, what is performing, what's not. Sorry, Kelly, I cut you off. No, no, no worries. You both have. So it's totally cool. <laughs> um, so I was just going to throw in there too. Like it depends also by persona, right? Like different individuals, like they want to look at content very differently. Somebody might actually enjoy sitting and watching a webinar, some, you know, take home the recording, listen to that at 1.5 and, you know, take away their notes. Other people are just like, no, just give me like the blog and give me like the, you know, spark notes breakdown of it. So it really just depends on who your audience is as well. And the personas that are actually reading what type of content. I love it. Well, before we were talking as well, you know, in the past, repurposing content wasn't the easiest thing to do. It took a lot of time and effort. It's like writing new content. And then ChatGPT and Generative AI and all this stuff came out. Um, and we quickly were talking about AI. How has AI impacted our ability to actually implement this R principle and repurpose content? For me, it's been basically uh, a game changer and a lifesaver at times. Uh, ultimately, uh, one of the things we mentioned privately is like uh, net new content in AI for all of my tests has not worked. So you still need a human as a subject matter expert to feed the machine essentially. Um, but ultimately it, it just uh, time to market and time to publishing has improved greatly. So just going back to the example of like repurposing the ebook and white paper and everything like that, uh, essentially just using AI to consume that written ebook 
uh, to break up, to identify the four major themes if it's not already apparent when you've written it. Uh, then you can break it up, create an outline, send that to a subject matter expert, and then from that, also generate the the infographics or the social or the LinkedIn carousel or all the different tidbits of information or social social bites from the content that you created, or take the theme and turn it into a conference talk, and then that talk can be repurposed into a blog. And so you just get it just gives you a, a way to like something to talk to to sound out your ideas and actually instantaneously have an outline and maybe some sections of content that you can then feed to the subject matter expert and then ultimately to the design team to generate that asset. So like my previous marketing team and I, we were able to generate a year's worth of content in one quarter, which uh, <laughs> That sounds like a fun quarter right that. there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> There's some burnout because like we over-delivered and then had to do it again the next quarter. But uh, ultimately that, that extends to like, as Kelly mentioned, like you're thinking about uh, like all the ad copy that goes for it, the emails that go, everything needs to be connected and linked. And so it just gives a way to do that. And then there's still human touches, obviously there. Um, so it's been a game changer. And then also one other point is like uh, a lot of time I was talking to a founder that they're going, their content's going viral, but they are stuck in bottom of the funnel uh, enablement content, meaning of the more how to's and it's talking to an audience that doesn't necessarily know how to use their product or aren't ready to use it. Just a cool, cool product, uh, which is hence the virality, but taking a theme that resonates and then kind of creating content down the funnel, starting like a bottoms up approach. And then knowing when to mix like marketing content versus enablement content and all along a single theme and then have proper CTAs. And so AI can help kind of frame that for you as well. I love that. I love that. Kelly, in your current role, how have you best been able to take advantage of AI as well and uh, in its role in repur repurposing? Yeah, I think um, that mainly is the area that, uh, you know, AI has helped is on the repurpose front. It's, it's pretty cool that you can, you know, put a link in there to a, a Google slide deck or a deck and basically to Mickey's point, like, hey, pull out like the top five takeaways from this slide deck. We're talking like slide deck of 40 slides, right? That one of our executives might have presented at, you know, like Dreamforce or like some other kind of conference like that, where for me, it's like, okay, a time stack to go through there and like pull out those key takeaways. It's like, oh, you give that to, you know, generative AI and like they plug it back to you and they say, okay, here's the key takeaways. And then if you ask like a little bit, if you dig into it a little bit more, well, what, what does this mean? How does this help, you know, our personas and those roles? And um, so definitely, definitely on the repurpose front, like taking slide decks, repurposing into blogs, webinars, take those transcriptions, repurposing into blogs, social media posts, um, definitely helps with the heavy lifting and the time suck. That would usually be my day. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, we have already come to an end of the podcast. It goes by super fast. But thank you both for being on here today. So if anyone wants to connect with either of you and continue the conversation to praise the R principle and trademark it for you, Mickey, or <laughs> Kelly sends you popcorn. I always popcorn. I'm obsessed with popcorn. It's really weird. Anyone wants to do anything <laughs> like that for either of you, how should they connect with you online? Uh, LinkedIn is the best way. Is there some kind of chat feature I can put my LinkedIn on? Yeah, we'll make sure we include name. it in the show notes. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was going to say, if I say it out loud, people aren't going to know how to spell my last <laughs> name. So, I love it. And LinkedIn for me as well. You can find me at Mickey the Great. No, uh, just Mickey Aharoni, and uh, the link will be in the comments. I welcome any conversations, questions, uh, reviewing content strategy, teaching me something. I'm always down to learn something new and adopt it. And I'll give you credit when I can. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, always open for discussion. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you both for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you for listening to the content amplified podcast. Please subscribe and leave us a review. And for additional ways to get more out of your content, visit our website at getmasset.com. That's getmasset.com. And tune in next time to the Content Amplified Podcast.